Hello, I'm Alex Dalrymple. Welcome back to Four Wheels and a Seat, the channel where I get to review new cars every week. And you know the drill, if you're enjoying the channel, please hit that subscribe button down below and give me a like as well. That would be awesome. Thank you. And this is the 2023 BMW 330i. I reviewed its slightly less powerful brother, the 320i, uh, about a month ago. And if you want to see that review where I do a bit of a deeper dive into the external look of this car, you can just click the link up there to check that out. But just briefly, like the 320i, it scores new headlights, which look really good. Uh, we've got a revised front grille, new bumpers, and a powered boot lid, which in a car this size, do you really need? Not really, but it's nice to have. It also has 19 inch alloys with blue M Sport brake calipers. Under the bonnet, we've got a two liter four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, which outputs 190 kilowatts and 400 Newton meters of torque, which makes it noticeably more powerful than the 320i. Zero to 100 in 5.9 seconds. Fuel economy comes in at 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is actually pretty good. Power is driven to the rear wheels only via a eight-speed Sportronic transmission. The biggest change in this car, of course, just like the 320i, is the new driver's cockpit. So we've got the all-new operating system 8 here running on a curved single display with two LEDs that look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and the software works really, really well. And this is being rolled out progressively throughout BMW's entire fleet of cars. And it really does bring a far more contemporary feel to the interior of these cars than there was last year. The more time I spend using Operating System 8, the more I like it. And it's worth your while spending like a good solid hour or so just playing with it when you first get into the car and setting up everything the way you want it because there is so much customization available. In addition to that, there's also up-to-date traffic, weather, news, and much more. There is a lot to get through in here. Plus, of course, wireless Apple CarPlay, which looks amazing on this car because it takes up the full screen and it runs really, really well. I haven't had a chance to test Android Auto because I don't have an Android phone. And it's connected to a Harman Kardon sound system, which just sounds amazing. Moving down the console, and just like the 320i, the climate controls are now built in entirely into the center console screen. And while that's not so great from a, you know, not taking your eyes off the road point of view, it is really easy just to quickly change the temperature here by pushing plus or minus, or you can do it via voice control. I have to say the voice control in this car is probably the best and most accurate I've come across in any car. It is really, really good. This car also has open pore wood across the uh, center of the uh, dash here, which feels really nice. It's got a really, really authentic feel to it. I, I'm pretty sure it's the real thing. And we've got that as the uh, lid down here on the cubby, which hides your wireless phone charging and a couple of cup holders too. Um, my phone does kind of slip off that wireless charging pad every now and then, so occasionally it won't charge. Just got to keep a bit of an eye on that. In addition, the wireless connection with Apple CarPlay can be just a little bit flaky. I have had a few dropouts and I think that's due to interference from something outside the car. I don't know what, I don't know enough about it to really talk about it that much, but it does happen. Lower console and we've still got a dial here which you can use to control the center console screen if you don't want to use the touch functions. And the gear shifter has been replaced with this large switch here to put the car in reverse or drive or neutral. Head up display in front of the driver, you can choose whatever you want to see on there. At the moment, I've got directions on there and um, it's good to have that actually because I've actually got the directions on three separate screens in front of me. The head up display, it's on the uh, digital instrument cluster as well as the center screen here. So no excuse for getting lost with this system. The digital instrument cluster, again, redesigned for operating system eight. There's a few different display modes linked to whatever drive mode you're in. You can also customize a few of the uh, displays on the center of the screen, plus whether you want larger dials or smaller ones that are closer together, that's entirely up to you. The steering wheel, uh, typical BMW unit, but for some reason, maybe it's just because this car is a bit more dynamic to drive than the 320i, I'm actually, liking this steering wheel more and I know that doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's ostensibly the same car but with a slightly more powerful engine but something about it just it makes it feel a bit better in this car it's I don't know it's hard to say exactly what it is this car has been uh, optioned with a heated steering wheel as well 
I love the fact that this is a black car with a tan interior. I think this is sort of the peak way to upholster a black car is with a tan interior. It looks really, really good. So this 330i has had a number of options added and it's got the M Sport seats. So these are really comfortable. They have great lumbar support. You can also adjust the bolsters as well to really hug you in if you're doing some particularly enthusiastic, sporty driving. So even though you are sitting really low in the cabin, visibility is fantastic. I can see right to the front of the bonnet, Terrific view through the rear vision mirror, good size wing mirrors with blind spot monitoring of course. So visibility is fantastic in this car and of course there's cameras dotted all around the place to uh, make sure you don't hit anything while you're parking. The ride in this car is definitely on the firmer side no matter what drive mode you're in. It, it does have adaptive dampers and in sport mode it can be quite a rough ride on all but the very smoothest roads. So if you're going over a speed hump or something like that, you're really going to notice it. Don't be holding a cup of coffee in your hand uh, when you're doing that. So we've got three drive modes, Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro. You can also design your own Sport driving mode with Sport Individual and adjust the sensitivity of the acceleration, the keenness of the gear shifting and the firmness of the adaptive dampers. Also in Sport mode, you do get a little bit more of that distinctive BMW exhaust noise. Unlike the M3, we don't have a specific button here to open up the valves on the exhaust to make them really loud, but it still does make a much nicer noise in Sport. One of the many things I really love about BMW is just how solid they are. Everything feels like it has been forged from steel or you know, carved out of stone. You know, nothing in here moves at all, and yet you are still extremely comfortable. The noise of the doors opening and closing, it makes such a satisfying noise when you pull the door closed. Everything is just so well built. And I mean, I guess that's what you're paying for at the end of the day. And it is kind of surprising that with such high build quality, BMW have only just in the last few months started introducing five-year warranties. The BMW 330i 0 to 100 time is apparently 5.9 seconds, so let's see what that's like in the real world. <laughs> Maybe not quite as sort of kick you in the guts quick as some of the electric cars I've been driving lately, but still really good. And you get that soundtrack, which you don't get in an EV. Like many car makers, BMW have increased their prices recently and the 330i is no exception. It starts at $97,950. And with the many options packages added to this particular car, it's well into six-figure territory, which is a lot of money for a small sedan, but it is probably the best driving small sedan you can buy, especially as a daily driver. So if you can afford it, I'd say go for it.